Environmental history is the study of human interaction with the natural world over time, emphasizing the active role nature plays in influencing human affairs and vice versa. Environmental history emerged in the United States out of the environmental movement of the 1960s and 1970s, and much of its impetus still stems from present-day global environmental concerns. The field was founded on conservation issues but has broadened in scope to include more general social and scientific history and may deal with cities, population or sustainable development. As all history occurs in the natural world, environmental history tends to focus on particular time scales, geographic regions, or key themes. It is also a strongly multidisciplinary subject that draws widely on both the humanities and natural science. The subject matter of environmental history can be divided into three main components. The first, nature itself and its change over time, includes the physical impact of humans on the Earth's land, water, atmosphere and biosphere. The second category, how humans use nature, includes the environmental consequences of increasing population, more effective technology and changing patterns of production and consumption. Other key themes are the transition from nomadic hunter-gatherer communities to settled agriculture in the Neolithic Revolution, the effects of colonial expansion and settlements, and the environmental and human consequences of the industrial and technological revolutions. Finally, environmental historians study how people think about nature, the way attitudes, beliefs and values influence interaction with nature, especially in the form of myths, religion and science. <laughs> Origin of name and early works In 1967 Roderick Nash published, "'Wilderness and the American Mind", a work that has become a classic text of early environmental history. In an address to the Organization of American Historians in 1969 published in 1970 Nash used the expression, "'Environmental History." Although 1972 is generally taken as the date when the term was first coined. The 1959 book by Samuel P. Hayes, Conservation and the Gospel of Efficiency, The Progressive Conservation Movement, 1890–1920, while being a major contribution to American political history, is now also regarded as a founding document in the field of environmental history. Hayes is Professor Emeritus of History at the University of Pittsburgh. Historiography Brief overviews of the historiography of environmental history have been published by J. R. McNeil, Richard White, and J. Donald Hughes. In 2014 Oxford University Press published a volume of 25 essays in the Oxford Handbook of Environmental History. <laughs> <laughs> Definition There is no universally accepted definition of environmental history. In general terms it is a history that tries to explain why our environment is like it is and how humanity has influenced its current condition, as well as commenting on the problems and opportunities of tomorrow. 
Donald Worster's widely quoted 1988 definition states that environmental history is the interaction between human cultures and the environment in the past. In 2001, J. Donald Hughes defined the subject as the study of human relationships through time with the natural communities of which they are a part in order to explain the processes of change that affect that relationship, and, in 2006, as history that seeks understanding of human beings as they have lived, worked and thought in relationship to the rest of nature through the changes brought by time." As a method, environmental history is the use of ecological analysis as a means of understanding human history less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 an account of changes in human societies as they relate to changes in the natural environment environmental historians are also interested in what people think about nature, and how they have expressed those ideas in folk religions, popular culture, literature and art. In 2003, J. R. McNeil defined it as, "...the history of the mutual relations between humankind and the rest of nature." Subject matter Traditional historical analysis has over time extended its range of study from the activities and influence of a few significant people to a much broader social, political, economic, and cultural analysis. Environmental history further broadens the subject matter of conventional history. In 1988, Donald Worster stated that environmental history attempts to make history more inclusive in its narratives by examining the role and place of nature in human life, and in 1993, that environmental history explores the ways in which the biophysical world has influenced the course of human history and the ways in which people have thought about and tried to transform their surroundings. The interdependency of human and environmental factors in the creation of landscapes is expressed through the notion of the cultural landscape. Worcester also questioned the scope of the discipline, asking, "...we study humans and nature, therefore can anything human or natural be outside our enquiry?" Environmental history is generally treated as a subfield of history. But some environmental historians challenge this assumption, arguing that while traditional history is human history, the story of people and their institutions, "...humans cannot place themselves outside the principles of nature." In this sense, they argue that environmental history is a version of human history within a larger context, one less dependent on anthropocentrism even though anthropogenic change is at the center of its narrative. <laughs> Dimensions J. Donald Hughes responded to the view that environmental history is «light on theory» or lacking theoretical structure by viewing the subject through the lens of three «dimensions» – nature and culture, history and science, and scale. This advances beyond Worcester's recognition of three broad clusters of issues to be addressed by environmental historians although both historians recognize that the emphasis of their categories might vary according to the particular study as, clearly, some studies will concentrate more on society and human affairs and others more on the environment.
Topic: Themes. Several themes are used to express these historical dimensions. A more traditional historical approach is to analyze the transformation of the globe's ecology through themes like the separation of man from nature during the Neolithic Revolution, imperialism and colonial expansion, exploration, agricultural change, the effects of the industrial and technological revolution, and urban expansion. More environmental topics include human impact through influences on forestry, fire, climate change, sustainability and so on. According to Paul Ward, the increasingly sophisticated history of colonization and migration can take on an environmental aspect, tracing the pathways of ideas and species around the globe and indeed is bringing about an increased use of such analogies and colonial understandings of processes within European history. The importance of the colonial enterprise in Africa, the Caribbean and Indian Ocean has been detailed by Richard Grove. Much of the literature consists of case studies targeted at the global, national and local levels. Scale Although environmental history can cover billions of years of history over the whole Earth, it can equally concern itself with local scales and brief time periods. Many environmental historians are occupied with local, regional and national histories. Some historians link their subject exclusively to the span of human history every time period in human history", while others include the period before human presence on Earth as a legitimate part of the discipline. Ian Simmons's Environmental History of Great Britain covers a period of about 10,000 years. There is a tendency to difference in time scales between natural and social phenomena. The causes of environmental change that stretch back in time may be dealt with socially over a comparatively brief period, although at all times environmental influences have extended beyond particular geographic regions and cultures. During the 20th and early 21st centuries, anthropogenic environmental change has assumed global proportions, most prominently with climate change but also as a result of settlement, the spread of disease and the globalization of world trade. History The questions of environmental history date back to antiquity, including Hippocrates, the father of medicine, who asserted that different cultures and human temperaments could be related to the surroundings in which peoples lived in airs, waters, places. Scholars as varied as Ibn Khaldun and Montesquieu found climate to be a key determinant of human behavior. During the Enlightenment, there was a rising awareness of the environment and scientists addressed themes of sustainability via natural history and medicine. However, the origins of the subject in its present form are generally traced to the 20th century. In 1929 a group of French historians founded the journal Analyse, in many ways a forerunner of modern environmental history since it took as its subject matter the reciprocal global influences of the environment and human society. The idea of the impact of the physical environment on civilizations was espoused by this analysis school to describe the long-term developments that shape human history by focusing away from political and intellectual history, toward agriculture, demography, and geography. 
Emmanuel Le Roy Le Dury, a pupil of the Annales School, was the first to really embrace, in the 1950s, environmental history in a more contemporary form. One of the most influential members of the Annales School was Lucien Febvre (1878–1956), whose book *A Geographical Introduction to History* is now a classic in the field. The most influential empirical and theoretical work in the subject has been done in the United States where teaching programs first emerged and a generation of trained environmental historians is now active. In the United States environmental history as an independent field of study emerged in the general cultural reassessment and reform of the 1960s and 1970s along with environmentalism, conservation history, and a gathering awareness of the global scale of some environmental issues. This was in large part a reaction to the way nature was represented in history at the time, which portrayed the advance of culture and technology as releasing humans from dependence on the natural world and providing them with the means to manage it and celebrated human mastery over other forms of life and the natural environment, and expected technological improvement and economic growth to accelerate accelerate. Environmental historians intended to develop a post-colonial historiography that was «more inclusive in its narratives». <laughs> Moral and political inspiration Moral and political inspiration to environmental historians has come from American writers and activists such as Henry Thoreau, John Muir, Aldo Leopold, and Rachel Carson. Environmental history frequently promoted a moral and political agenda, although it steadily became a more scholarly enterprise. Early attempts to define the field were made in the United States by Roderick Nash in The State of Environmental History and in other works by frontier historians Frederick Jackson Turner, James Mullen, and Walter Prescott Webb, who analyzed the process of settlement. Their work was expanded by a second generation of more specialized environmental historians such as Alfred Crosby, Samuel P. Hayes, Donald Worcester, William Cronin, Richard White, Carolyn Merchant, J. R. McNeil, Donald Hughes, and Chad Montry in the United States and Paul Ward, Sverker Sorlin, Robert A. Lambert, T. C. Smout, and Peter Coates in Europe. British Empire Although environmental history was growing rapidly after 1970, it only reached historians of the British Empire in the 1990s. Gregory Barton argues that the concept of environmentalism emerged from forestry studies, and emphasizes the British imperial role in that research. He argues that imperial forestry movement in India around 1900 included government reservations, new methods of fire protection, and attention to revenue-producing forest management. The result eased the fight between romantic preservationists and laissez-faire businessmen, thus giving the compromise from which modern environmentalism emerged. In recent years, numerous scholars cited by James Beattie have examined the environmental impact of the empire. Baynard and Hughes argue that the discovery and commercial or scientific use of new plants was an important concern in the 18th and 19th centuries. 
The efficient use of rivers through dams and irrigation projects was an expensive but important method of raising agricultural productivity. Searching for more efficient ways of using natural resources, the British moved flora, fauna and commodities around the world, sometimes resulting in ecological disruption and radical environmental change. Imperialism also stimulated more modern attitudes toward nature and subsidised botany and agricultural research. Scholars have used the British Empire to examine the utility of the new concept of eco-cultural networks as a lens for examining interconnected, wide-ranging social and environmental processes. Topic current practice In the United States the American Society for Environmental History was founded in 1975 while the first institute devoted specifically to environmental history in Europe was established in 1991, based at the University of St Andrews in Scotland. In 1986, the Dutch Foundation for the History of Environment and Hygiene Network was founded and publishes four newsletters per year. In the UK the White Horse Press in Cambridge has, since 1995, published the journal Environment and History which aims to bring scholars in the humanities and biological sciences closer together in constructing long and well-founded perspectives on present-day environmental problems and a similar publication Tige Schrift vor Ecologische Geschichte journal for environment Environmental History is a combined Flemish-Dutch initiative mainly dealing with topics in the Netherlands and Belgium although it also has an interest in European environmental history. Each issue contains abstracts in English, French and German. In 1999 the journal was converted into a yearbook for environmental history. In Canada the Network in Canadian History and Environment facilitates the growth of environmental history through numerous workshops and a significant digital infrastructure including their website and podcast. Communication between European nations is restricted by language difficulties. In April 1999 a meeting was held in Germany to overcome these problems and to coordinate environmental history in Europe. This meeting resulted in the creation of the European Society for Environmental History in 1999. Only two years after its establishment, ESEH held its first international conference in St Andrews, Scotland. Around 120 scholars attended the meeting and 105 papers were presented on topics covering the whole spectrum of environmental history. The conference showed that environmental history is a viable and lively field in Europe and since then ESEH has expanded to over 400 members and continues to grow and attracted international conferences in 2003 and 2005. In 1999 the Centre for Environmental History was established at the University of Stirling. Some history departments at European universities are now offering introductory courses in environmental history and postgraduate courses in environmental history have been established at the Universities of Nottingham, Stirling and Dundee and more recently a graduierten Kolleg was created at the University of Göttingen in Germany. 
In 2009, the Rachel Carson Center for Environment and Society (RCC), an international interdisciplinary center for research and education in the environmental humanities and social sciences, was founded as a joint initiative of Munich's Ludwig Maximilians Universität and the Deutsches Museum, with the generous support of the German Federal Ministry of Education and research. The Environment and Society Portal is the Rachel Carson Center's open access digital archive and publication platform. <laughs> Related disciplines Environmental history prides itself in bridging the gap between the arts and natural sciences although to date the scales weigh on the side of science. A definitive list of related subjects would be lengthy indeed and singling out those for special mention a difficult task. However, those frequently quoted include, historical geography, the history and philosophy of science, history of technology and climate science. On the biological side there is, above all, ecology and historical ecology, but also forestry and especially forest history, archaeology and anthropology. When the subject engages in environmental advocacy it has much in common with environmentalism. With increasing globalization and the impact of global trade on resource distribution, concern over never-ending economic growth and the many human inequities environmental history is now gaining allies in the fields of ecological and environmental economics, engagement with sociological thinkers and the humanities is limited but cannot be ignored through the beliefs and ideas that guide human human action. This has been seen as the reason for a perceived lack of support from traditional historians. Issues The subject has a number of areas of lively debate. These include discussion concerning, what subject matter is most appropriate, whether environmental advocacy can detract from scholarly objectivity, standards of professionalism in a subject where much outstanding work has been done by non-historians, the relative contribution of nature and humans in determining the passage of history, the degree of connection with, and acceptance by, other disciplines, but especially mainstream history. For Paul Ward the sheer scale, scope and diffuseness of the environmental history endeavor calls for an analytical toolkit, a range of common issues and questions to push forward collectively, and a core problem. He sees a lack of human agency in its texts and suggest it be written more to act, as a source of information for environmental scientists, incorporation of the notion of risk, a closer analysis of what it is we mean by «environment», confronting the way environmental history is at odds with the humanities because it emphasizes the division between materialist, and cultural or constructivist explanations for human behavior". <laughs> <laughs> Global sustainability Many of the themes of environmental history inevitably examine the circumstances that produced the environmental problems of the present day. A litany of themes that challenge global sustainability, including population, consumerism, and materialism 
climate change, waste disposal, deforestation and loss of wilderness, industrial agriculture, species extinction, depletion of natural resources, invasive organisms and urban development. The simple message of sustainable use of renewable resources is frequently repeated and early as 1864 George Perkins Marsh was pointing out that the changes we make in the environment may later reduce the environment's usefulness to humans so any changes should be made with great care, what we would nowadays call enlightened self-interest. Richard Grove has pointed out that, "...states will act to prevent environmental degradation only when their economic interests are threatened." <laughs> Advocacy It is not clear whether environmental history should promote a moral or political agenda. The strong emotions raised by environmentalism, conservation and sustainability can interfere with historical objectivity, polemical tracts and strong advocacy can compromise objectivity and professionalism. Engagement with the political process certainly has its academic perils although accuracy and commitment to the historical method is not necessarily threatened by environmental involvement. Environmental historians have a reasonable expectation that their work will inform policy makers. A recent historiographical shift has placed an increased emphasis on inequality as an element of environmental environmental history. Imbalances of power in resources, industry, and politics have resulted in the burden of industrial pollution being shifted to less powerful populations in both the geographic and social spheres. And critical examination of the traditional environmentalist movement from this historical perspective notes the ways in which early advocates of environmentalism sought the aesthetic preservation of middle class spaces and sheltered their own communities from the worst effects of air and water pollution, while neglecting the plight of the less privileged. Communities with less economic and socio-political power often lack the resources to get involved in environmental advocacy. Environmental history increasingly highlights the ways in which the middle class environmental movement has fallen short and left behind entire communities. Interdisciplinary research now understands historic inequality as a lens through which to predict future social developments in the environmental sphere, particularly with regard to climate change. The United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs cautions that a warming planet will exacerbate environmental and other inequalities, particularly with regard to a increase in the exposure of the disadvantaged groups to the adverse effects of climate change, b increase in their susceptibility to damage caused by climate change, and c decrease in their ability to cope and recover from the damage suffered. As an interdisciplinary field that encompasses a new understanding of social justice dynamics in a rapidly changing global climate, environmental history is inherently advocative. <laughs> Declensionist narratives Narratives of environmental history tend to be declensionist, that is, accounts of progressive decline under human activity. <laughs> Presentism and culpability Under the accusation of «presentism», 
It is sometimes claimed that, with its genesis in the late 20th century environmentalism and conservation issues, environmental history is simply a reaction to contemporary problems, an attempt to read late 20th century developments and concerns back into past historical periods in which they were not operative, and certainly not conscious to human participants during those times." This is strongly related to the idea of culpability. In environmental debate blame can always be apportioned, but it is more constructive for the future to understand the values and imperatives of the period under discussion so that causes are determined and the context explained. <laughs> environmental determinism For some environmental historians, the general conditions of the environment, the scale and arrangement of land and sea, the availability of resources, and the presence or absence of animals available for domestication, and associated organisms and disease vectors, that makes the development of human cultures possible and even predispose the direction of their development, and that History is inevitably guided by forces that are not of human origin or subject to human choice. This approach has been attributed to American environmental historians Webb and Turner and, more recently, to Jared Diamond in his book Guns, Germs, and Steel, where the presence or absence of disease vectors and resources such as plants and animals that are amenable to domestication that may not only stimulate the development of human culture but even determine, to some extent, the direction of that development. The claim that the path of history has been forged by environmental rather than cultural forces is referred to as environmental determinism while, at the other extreme, is what may be called cultural determinism. An example of cultural determinism would be the view that human influence is so pervasive that the idea of pristine nature has little validity, that there is no way of relating to nature without culture. <laughs> Methodology Useful guidance on the process of doing environmental history has been given by Donald Worcester, Carolyn Merchant, William Cronin and Ian Simmons. Worcester's three core subject areas the environment itself, human impacts on the environment, and human thought about the environment are generally taken as a starting point for the student as they encompass many of the different skills required. The tools are those of both history and science with a requirement for fluency in the language of natural science and especially ecology. In fact methodologies and insights from a range of physical and social sciences is required, there seeming to be universal agreement that environmental history is indeed a multidisciplinary subject. Some key works Chakrabarti, Ranjan ed. Does Environmental History Matter? Shikar, Subsistence, Sustenance and the Sciences Kolkata, Reader's Service, 2006 Chakrabarti, Ranjan ed. Situating Environmental History New Delhi, Manohar, 2007 Cronin, William ed. Uncommon Ground, Toward Reinventing Nature New York, W.W. Norton and Company, 1995 Dunlap, 
Thomas R. Nature and the English Diaspora, Environment and History in the United States, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, New York, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, 1999 Glacken, Clarence, Traces on the Rhodian Shore, Nature and Culture in Western Thought from Ancient Times to the End of the Nineteenth Century Berkeley, University of California Press 1967 Griffiths, Tom and Libby Robin eds, Ecology and Empire, The Environmental History of Settler Societies, Keel, Keel University Press, 1997 Grove, Richard, Green Imperialism, Colonial Expansion, Tropical Island Edens and the Origins of Environmentalism, 1600–1860, Cambridge University Press, 1995, Hughes, J.D., An Environmental History of the World, Humankind's Changing Role in the Community of Life Oxford, Routledge, 2001 Hughes, J.D., Global Environmental History, The Long View, Globalizations, Vol. 2 No. 3, 2005, 293–208. Lafreniere, Gilbert F., 2007. The Decline of Nature, Environmental History and the Western Worldview, Academica Press, Bethesda, MD ISBN 978-1933146409 Mackenzie, John M., Imperialism and the Natural World, Manchester University Press, 1990 McCormick, John, Reclaiming Paradise, The Global Environmental Movement, Bloomington, Indiana University Press, 1989 Rajan, Ravi S., Modernizing Nature, Forestry and Imperial Eco-Development, 1800–1950 Oxford, Oxford University Press, 2006 Redcliffe, Michael R., Frontier, Histories of Civil Society and Nature Cambridge, M.A., The MIT Press, 2006. Stevies, Dimitris, The Globalizations of the Environment, Globalizations, Vol. 2 No. 3, 2005, 323–334. Williams, Michael, Deforesting the Earth, From Prehistory to Global Crisis. An Abridgment, Chicago, University of Chicago Press, 2006 White, Richard, The Organic Machine, The Remaking of the Columbia River, Hill and Wong, 1996 Worcester, Donald, Nature's Economy, A Study of Ecological Ideals, Cambridge University Press, 1977 Zylinga de Boer, Gel and Donald Theodore Sanders, Volcanoes in Human History, The Far-Reaching Effects of Major Eruptions. Princeton, Princeton University Press, 2002. ISBN 978-0691111838-3 Topic: Seminal works by region In 2004 a theme issue of Environment and History 10 provided an overview of environmental history as practiced in Africa, the Americas, Australia, New Zealand, China and Europe as well as those with global scope. J. Donald Hughes 2006 has also provided a global conspectus of major contributions to the environmental history literature. George Perkins Marsh, Man and Nature, or, Physical Geography as Modified by Human Action, ed. David Lowenthal, Cambridge, M.A., Belknap Press of Harvard University Press, 1965-1864. 
Topic Africa Adams, Jonathan S. and Thomas McShane, The Myth of Wild Africa, Conservation Without Illusion Berkeley, University of California Press, 1996 266p, covers 1900–1980s Anderson, David, Grove, Richard. Conservation in Africa, People, Policies and Practice 1988, 355 pp Bolan, Matesio. Chiefs, Hunters and Adventurers, The Foundation of the Okavango, Moremi National Park, Botswana. Journal of Historical Geography, 31.2, April 2005, 241 to 259. Carruthers, Jane. Africa: Histories, Ecologies, and Societies, Environment and History, 10, 2004, pp. 379 to 406. Koch, Jacqueline and Eddie Koch, eds. Going Green: People, Politics, and the Environment in South Africa. Cape Town: Oxford University Press, 1991. Dovers, Stephen, Ruth Edgecombe, and Bill Guest, eds. South Africa's Environmental History: Cases and Comparisons. Athens: Ohio University Press, 2003. Green Musselman. Elizabeth, Plant Knowledge at the Cape, A Study in African and European Collaboration, International Journal of African Historical Studies, Vol. 36, 2003, 367–392 Jacobs, Nancy J., Environment, Power and Injustice, A South African History Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, 2003 Mathai, Wangari, Green Belt Movement, Sharing the Approach and the Experience New York, Lantern Books, 2003 McCann, James, Green Land, Brown Land, Black Land, An Environmental History of Africa, 1800–1990 Portsmouth, Heinemann, 1999 Showers, Kate B. Imperial Gullies, Soil Erosion and Conservation in Lesotho 2005-346 pp Stain, Fia the Lingering Environmental Impact of Repressive Governance, The Environmental Legacy of the Apartheid Era for the New South Africa." Globalizations, 2 No. 3 2005, 391–403 Antarctica Pine, S. J., The Ice, A Journey to Antarctica, University of Iowa Press, 1986 Canada Dorsey, Kirkpatrick the Dawn of Conservation Diplomacy, U.S.-Canadian Wildlife Protection Treaties in the Progressive Era, Washington, University of Washington Press, 1998 Wynne, Graham. Canada and Arctic North America, An Environmental History. Santa Barbara, ABC Clio, 2007. United States Allet, Patrick. A Climate of Crisis, America in the Age of Environmentalism 2014, wide-ranging scholarly history since 1950s excerpt Andrews, Richard N. L., Managing the Environment, Managing Ourselves, A History of American Environmental Policy, Yale University Press, 1999, Bates, J. Leonard. 
Fulfilling American Democracy, The Conservation Movement, 1907–1921, The Mississippi Valley Historical Review, 1957–44 No. 1 pp. 29–57, in JSTOR Brinkley, Douglas G. The Wilderness Warrior, Theodore Roosevelt and the Crusade for America, 2009 excerpt and text search Carson, Rachel, Silent Spring Cambridge, Mass., Riverside Press, 1962 Colley, R. McGregor. Federal Land, Western Anger, The Sagebrush Rebellion and Environmental Politics 1993, on Conservatives Cronin, William, Changes in the Land, Indians, Colonists and the Ecology of New England New York, Hill and Wong, 1983 Cronin, William, Nature's Metropolis, Chicago and the Great West New York, W. W. Norton and Company, 1991 Flippin, J. Brooks. Nixon and the Environment 2000. Gottlieb, Robert, Forcing the Spring, The Transformation of the American Environmental Movement Washington, Island Press, 1993 Hayes, Samuel P. Conservation and the Gospel of Efficiency 1959, on Progressive Era. Hayes, Samuel P. Beauty, Health, and Permanence, Environmental Politics in the United States, 1955–1985 The Standard Scholarly History Hayes, Samuel, Conservation and the Gospel of Efficiency, The Progressive Conservation Movement 1890–1920 Cambridge, M. A., Harvard University Press, 1959 Hayes, Samuel P. A. History of Environmental Politics Since 1945 2000, Shorter Standard History King, Judson. The Conservation Fight, From Theodore Roosevelt to the Tennessee Valley Authority 2009, Merchant, Carolyn. American Environmental History, An Introduction Columbia University Press, 2007. Merchant, Carolyn. The Columbia Guide to American Environmental History Columbia University Press, 2012. Merchant, Carolyn. The Death of Nature, Women, Ecology and the Scientific Revolution New York, Harper and Row, 1980 Nash, Roderick. The Rights of Nature, A History of Environmental Ethics Madison, University of Wisconsin Press, 1989 Nash, Roderick. Wilderness and the American Mind, 4th ed. 2001, The Standard Intellectual History Rice, James D. Nature and History in the Potomac Country, From Hunter-Gatherers to the Age of Jefferson 2009, Sale, Kirkpatrick. The Green Revolution, The American Environmental Movement, 1962–1999 New York, Hill & Wong, 1993 Sheffer, Victor B. The Shaping of Environmentalism in America 1991. Stradling, David ed. Conservation in the Progressive Era, Classic Texts Washington, University of Washington Press, 2004, Primary Sources Strong, Douglas H. Dreamers and Defenders, American Conservationists, 1988 Online Edition, Good Biographical Studies of the Major Leaders Turner, James Morton, The Spectre of Environmentalism, Wilderness, Environmental Politics, and the Evolution of the New Right. The Journal of American History 96.1 123–47 online at History Cooperative Unger, Nancy C., Beyond Nature's Housekeepers, American Women in Environmental History, New York, Oxford University Press, 2012 Worcester, 
MacDonald, Under Western Skies, Nature and History in the American West Oxford University Press, 1992 Malosi, Martin V, Coping with Abundance, Energy and Environment in Industrial America Temple University Press, 1985 Steinberg, Ted, Down to Earth, Nature's Role in American History Oxford University Press, 2002 Rothman, Hal K. 1998. The Greening of a Nation? Environmentalism in the United States since 1945. Fort Worth, Texas, Harcourt Brace College Publishers. ISBN 0155028553. Latin America and the Caribbean Boyer, Christopher R. Political Landscapes, Forests, Conservation, and Community in Mexico, Durham, Duke University Press 2015, Dean, Warren with Broadax and Firebrand, The Destruction of the Brazilian Atlantic Forest, Berkeley, University of California Press, 1995 Funes Monzote, Reynaldo. From Rainforest to Cane Field in Cuba, An Environmental History Since 1492, 2008 Matthews, Andrew S. Instituting Nature, Authority, Expertise, and Power in Mexican Forests, Cambridge, Massachusetts Institute of Technology Press, 2011, Melville, Eleanor. A Plague of Sheep, Environmental Consequences of the Conquest of Mexico, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, 1994 Miller, Sean William. An Environmental History of Latin America, 2007 Miller, Sean William. Fruitless Trees, Portuguese Conservation and Brazil's Colonial Timber. Stanford, Stanford University Press 2000. Noss, Andrew and I. M. K. E. Oding. Hunter Self-Monitoring by the Isoceno Guarani in the Bolivian Chaco. Biodiversity and Conservation, 14.11-2005-2679-2693. Raffles, Hugh, et al. Further Reflections on Amazonian Environmental History, Transformations of Rivers and Streams. Latin American Research Review. Volume 38, No. 3, 2003-165-187 Santiago, Myrna I. The Ecology of Oil, Environment, Labor, and the Mexican Revolution, 1900–1938. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press 2006. Simonian, Lane. Defending the Land of the Jaguar, A History of Conservation in Mexico, Austin, University of Texas Press, 1995 Wakeld, Emily. Revolutionary Parks, Conservation, Social Justice, and Mexico's National Parks, 1910–1940. Tucson, University of Arizona Press 2012 Asia Boomgard, Peter, ed. Paper Landscapes, Explorations in the Environment of Indonesia Leiden, KITLV Press, 1997 Burke III, Edmund, The Coming Environmental Crisis in the Middle East, A Historical Perspective, 1750–2000 CE April 27, 2005. UC World History Workshop. Essays and Positions from the World History Workshop. Paper 2. David, A. and Guha, R. eds. 1995. Nature, Culture, Imperialism, Essays on the Environmental History of South Asia. Delhi, India, Oxford University Press. 
Elvin, Mark and Sui Yung Lu eds, Sediments of Time, Environment and Society in Chinese History Cambridge University Press, 1998 Fisher, Michael. An Environmental History of India, From Earliest Times to the 21st Century Cambridge UP, 2018, Gajal, M. R. Guha. This Fishered Land, An Ecological History of India University of California Press, 1993 Grove, Richard, Vanita Damodaran, and Satpal Sangwin eds, Nature and the Orient, The Environmental History of South and Southeast Asia Oxford University Press, 1998 Hill, Christopher V, South Asia, An Environmental History Santa Barbara, ABC Clio, 2008 Menzi, Nicholas, Forest and Land Management in Late Imperial China London, Macmillan Press. 1994 Maohong, Bao, Environmental History in China, Environment and History, Vol. 10 No. 4, November 2004, pp. 475–499 Marks, R. B., Tigers, Rice, Silk and Silt. Environment and Economy in Late Imperial South China Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, 1998 Purdue, Peter C., Lakes of Empire, Man and Water in Chinese History, Modern China, 16 January 1990, 119–29 Shapiro, Judith, Mao's War Against Nature, Politics and the Environment in Revolutionary China New York, Cambridge University Press. 2001. ISBN 978-0521786805 Shiva, Vandana, Stolen Harvest, The Hijacking of the Global Food Supply Cambridge MA, South End Press, 2000, ISBN 0-89608-608-9 Tal, Alan, Pollution in a Promised Land, An Environmental History of Israel Berkeley University of California Press, 2002 Totman, Conrad D., The Green Archipelago, Forestry in Pre-Industrial Japan Berkeley, University of California Press, 1989 Totman, Conrad D., Pre-Industrial Korea and Japan in Environmental Perspective Leiden, Brill, 2004 Sui Yung Lu, Sediments of Time, Environment and Society in Chinese History Cambridge University Press, 1998 Tull, Malcolm, and A. R. Krishnan Resource Use and Environmental Management in Japan, 1890–1990, in, J. R. McNeil ed., Environmental History of the Pacific and the Pacific Rim Aldershot, Hampshire, Ashgate Publishing, 2001 Y. O. K. Shu Li and Alvin Y. So, Asia's Environmental Movements, Comparative Perspectives Armonk, M. E. Sharp, 1999 Europe Brimblecombe, Peter and Christian Pfister, The Silent Countdown, Essays in European Environmental History Berlin, Springer Verlag, 1993 Crosby, Alfred W., Ecological Imperialism, The Biological Expansion of Europe, 900-1900 Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, 1986 Christensen, Peter, Decline of Iranshar, Irrigation and Environments in the History of the Middle East, 500 BC to 1500 AD. Austin, University of Texas Press, 1993. 
Ditt, Carl, Nature Conservation in England and Germany, 1900–1970, Forerunner of Environmental Protection, Contemporary European History 521–28 Hughes, J. Donald, Pan's Travail, Environmental Problems of the Ancient Greeks and Romans, Baltimore, Johns Hopkins, 1994 Hughes, J. Donald, The Mediterranean. An Environmental History Santa Barbara, ABC Clio, 2005 Marty Escale, Maria Antonia La Construcció del Concepte de Natura a la Catalunya Moderna Barcelona, Universitat Autonoma de Barcelona, 2004 Netting, Robert, Balancing on an Alp, Ecological Change and Continuity in a Swiss Mountain Community Cambridge University Press, 1981 Parmentier, Isabel, Dir, Ledent, Carol, Call, La Recherche en Histoire de l'Environnement, Belgique, Congo, Rwanda, Burundi, Namur, 2010 Call. Autres Futures Stephen J. Pine, Vestal Fire an Environmental History, Told Through Fire, of Europe and Europe's Encounter with the World Seattle, University of Washington Press, 1997 Richards, John F., The Unending Frontier, Environmental History of the Early Modern World Berkeley, University of California Press, 2003 Whited, Tamara L. Ed. Northern Europe. An Environmental History. Santa Barbara, ABC Clio, 2005. Topic Australia, New Zealand and Oceania. Bennett, Judith Ann. Natives and Exotics: World War II and Environment in the Southern Pacific. Honolulu, University of Hawaii Press, 2009. Bennett, Judith Ann. Pacific Forest: A History of Resource Control and Contest in Solomon Islands. C. 1800 to 1997. Cambridge and. Leiden, White Horse Press and Brill, 2000 Bridgman, H. A., Could Climate Change Have Had an Influence on the Polynesian Migrations, Paleogeography, Paleoclimatology, Paleoecology, 41-1983-193-206-1 Brooking, Tom and Eric Pawson, Environmental Histories of New Zealand Oxford, Oxford University Press, 2002. Karen, L. T., A History of Forestry in Australia Canberra, 1985. Castles, R., The Role of Prehistoric Man in the Faunal Extinctions of New Zealand and Other Pacific Islands, in Martin, P. S. and Klein, R. G. E. D. S., Quaternary Extinctions, A Prehistoric Revolution Tucson, The University of Arizona Press, 1984 Darcy, Paul, The People of the Sea, Environment, Identity, and History in Oceania Honolulu, University of Hawaii Press, 2006 Dargaville, John ed., Australia and New Zealand Forest Histories Short Overviews, Australian Forest History Society Inc. Occasional Publications, No. 1 Kingston, Australian Forest History Society, 2005 Dovers, Stephen ed., Essays in Australian Environmental History, Essays and Cases Oxford, OUP, 1994 Dovers, Stephen ed., Environmental History and Policy, Still Settling Australia South Melbourne, Oxford University Press, 2000
Flannery, Tim, The Future Eaters, An Ecological History of the Australian Lands and People Sydney, Read Books, 1994 ISBN 0-8021-3943-4 Garden, Don, Australia, New Zealand, and the Pacific. An Environmental History Santa Barbara, ABC Clio, 2005 Hughes, J. Donald, Nature and Culture in the Pacific Islands, Leidschrift, 21-2006-1, 129-144. Hughes, J. Donald, Tahiti, Hawaii, New Zealand, Polynesian Impacts on Island Ecosystems, in, An Environmental History of the World. Humankind's Changing Role in the Community of Life, London and New York, Routledge, 2002 James Beatty, Environmental Anxiety in New Zealand, 1840–1941, Climate Change, Soil Erosion, Sand Drift, Flooding and Forest Conservation, Environment and History 9 2003, 379–390 92 Night, Catherine, New Zealand's Rivers, An Environmental History Christchurch, Canterbury University Press, 2016. McNeil, John R., Of Rats and Men. A Synoptic Environmental History of the Island Pacific, Journal of World History, Vol. 5, No. 2, 299 to 349 Pine, Streetefen Burning Bush, A Fire History of Australia, New York, Henry Holt, 1991. Robin, Libby, Defending the Little Desert, The Rise of Ecological Consciousness in Australia, Melbourne, MUP, 1998. Robin, Libby, How a Continent Created a Nation, Sydney, University of New South Wales Press, 2007. Robin, Libby, The Flight of the Emu, A Hundred Years of Australian Ornithology 1901-2001. Melbourne, Melbourne University Press, 2000. Smith, Mike, Hess, Paul, eds. 23 degrees s. Archaeology and Environmental History of the Southern Deserts. Canberra, National Museum of Australia Press, 2005. Star, Paul, New Zealand Environmental History: A Question of Attitudes, Environment and History. 9, 2000. 463–475 Young, Ann R. M. Environmental Change in Australia Since 1788 Oxford University Press, 2000 Young, David, Our Islands, Ourselves, A History of Conservation in New Zealand Dunedin, Otago University Press, 2004 Topic: United Kingdom. Baynard, William and Lot Hughes, Environment and Empire, Oxford, 2007. Clapp, Brian W. An Environmental History of Britain Since the Industrial Revolution, London, 1994. Excerpt. Grove, Richard, Green Imperialism, Colonial Expansion, Tropical Island Edens and the Origins of Environmentalism, 1600–1860 Cambridge, 1994 Lambert, Robert, Contested Mountains Cambridge, 2001 Mosley, Stephen, The Chimney of the World, A History of Smoke Pollution in Victorian and Edwardian Manchester White Horse, 2001. Porter, Dale, The Thames Embankment, Environment, Technology, and Society in Victorian London, University of Akron, 1998. 
Simmons, Ian G., Environmental History of Great Britain from 10,000 Years Ago to the Present Edinburgh, 2001. Scheele, John, An Environmental History of 20th Century Britain Basingstoke, 2002. Thorsheim, Peter, Inventing Pollution, Coal, Smoke, and Culture in Britain Since 1800 Ohio University, 2006. Future Environmental history, like all historical studies, shares the hope that through an examination of past events it may be possible to forge a more considered future. In particular a greater depth of historical knowledge can inform environmental controversies and guide policy decisions. The subject continues to provide new perspectives, offering cooperation between scholars with different disciplinary backgrounds and providing an improved historical context to resource and environmental problems. There seems little doubt that, with increasing concern for our environmental future, environmental history will continue along the path of environmental advocacy from which it originated as, human impact on the living systems of the planet bring us no closer to utopia, but instead to a crisis of survival with key themes being population growth, climate change, conflict over environmental policy at different levels of human organization, extinction, biological invasions, the environmental consequences of technology especially biotechnology, the reduced supply of resources, most notably energy, materials and water. Hughes comments that environmental historians will find themselves increasingly challenged by the need to explain the background of the world market economy and its effects on the global environment. Supranational instrumentalities threaten to overpower conservation in a drive for what is called sustainable development, but which in fact envisions no limits to economic growth. Hughes also notes that, "...environmental history is notably absent from nations that most adamantly reject U.S., or Western influences." Michael Bess sees the world increasingly permeated by potent technologies in a process he calls artificialization, which has been accelerating since the 1700s, but at a greatly accelerated rate after 1945. Over the next 50 years, this transformative process stands a good chance of turning our physical world, and our society, upside down. Environmental historians can play a vital role in helping humankind to understand the gale force of artifice that we have unleashed on our planet and on ourselves. Against this background, environmental history can give an essential perspective, offering knowledge of the historical process that led to the present situation, give examples of past problems and solutions, and an analysis of the historical forces that must be dealt with or, as expressed by William Cronin, the viability and success of new human modes of existing within the constraints of the environment and its resources requires both an understanding of the past and an articulation of a new ethic for the future. Related journals Key journals in this field include Environment and History Environmental History, co-published by the American Society for Environmental History and Forest History Society Global Environment, a journal of history and natural and social sciences
Topic see also American Society for Environmental History ASEH Conservation Movement Conservation in the United States List of Environmental History Topics Network in Canadian History and Environment Environment and Society Portal Topic Bibliography Global Topic Asia and Middle East Topic Europe and Russia Equals 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 historiography